so much for in Jesus. All right, how you doing, guys? As you can see, I've been shaved. Right, invite people. Another session that wasn't planned, but I decided to do it anyway. Trusting the Holy Spirit to bless the session, to bless us and fill us for the glory of Jesus Christ. Yahovah Father, Son, Spirit, in Jesus' name. Yahovah Father, Son, Spirit. Is my voice good? Is my mic good? The sound of the mic, the voice good. You're going to hear the air condition in the back, but hey, price we got to pay, friend. You know what I'm saying? Everyone good? Okay. The camera's good. Here, let's see. No matter what you do, I'm going crazy. I'd rather be alone. Okay, good, good, good. All right. All right, hopefully. We trust the grace and mercy of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We love the Father. We love the Father, Son, and the Father's eternal spirit. Father, Son, and Spirit, in Jesus, Almighty name, watch me, O God, my Savior, King, Lord, Jesus Christ. The Father, Father, Son, and Spirit, in Jesus, Almighty name, Lord, Father, Son, and Spirit. Okay, folks, good to see you. It's a Saturday. It's 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, meaning 6 p.m. in New York. Hopefully, we'll get the regular crowds in. I don't know because it's a Saturday. The Lord's will be done. Whoever he wants to bring, he will bring for his glory. So we we praise you, Father. We love you, Father. Give us the power of the Holy Spirit to love you perfectly, to obey your word perfectly, to demonstrate our love by obeying, obeying your word, Father, living for you in the name of Jesus Christ, in union with the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. We love your son, Lord, the Lord Jesus. Please, Father, help us to conform to the image of your son by the power of the Holy Spirit. Cleanse us in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. Your heart become flesh and our loved ones. Cleanse my daughters, their mother, in the blood of Jesus. And Abba, Father, we love your spirit. We depend on your spirit. We cling to your spirit. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. And Father, we ask that you destroy our fears, our doubts, our unbelief. Grant us perfect faithfulness to move mountains for your glory, Father. Save me from stammering and stuttering. Loosen my tongue to speak clearly. Anoint the sound of my voice, Abba, to be pleasing to the ears of your children by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Father, in Jesus' name, fill my lungs and my chest and my heart and throat with the breath of life, the health I need to do this for your glory. And enable me to recall the scriptures perfectly, interpret them correctly, and, and illuminate every one of us, Father, with wisdom from your spirit, knowledge from your spirit, understanding from your spirit, to plunge the depth of your word, to handle it reverently, live it out by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> may the Lord Jesus increase in us, may we decrease. And Abba, save us from the fears and the scares and the tactics of Satan and his children to trust in you, to shield us from all these attacks. Give us grace to trust that your spirit will guide us wherever he wants us to go and empower us to magnify the name of Jesus Christ and to never shame the name of Jesus Christ, not to be crowd pleasers and not to conform to the world and not to tickle ears and not to be unnecessarily offensive, but to glorify Jesus first and foremost and to be the salt of the earth and light of the world. Please, Father, take over this session. Save me from confusion. Bless them. Save them from confusion. Illuminate them and me to know your word, to love your word, to proclaim your word and live it out for the majesty of Jesus Christ. Destroy distractions of Satan. Bless the internet connection. Keep us focused. Please, Abba, in Jesus' name, by the power of the Spirit. We love you, Abba. Bobby, we love you. Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Yahovah, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' almighty name. Yahovah, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I don't know if the mods are here. Usually, we'll have one or two or a few mods. Hopefully, we'll have the right mod here who can post Bible verses. All the mods are right, but I'm just saying. If not, then... Oh, well, I'll have to read it for myself. I know people on Discord. I'm actually answering a question that was asked of me on Discord or not so much asked of me, but this came up in Discord. And I said, let me answer this on YouTube for my YouTube channel to benefit everyone else who can't join Discord or, or can't be there when I'm there. All right? May the Father loosen my tongue to speak truth without error by the power of the Holy Spirit. For the glory of Jesus Christ. And cleanse our mouths, our hearts, our souls, our minds, and the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, no. I, I doubt that only one way. I, I doubt it. Anyway, is I don't. I guess first and last not here, and Protestant couldn't be here, huh, Jai? So you're the only mod I have? 
to Jai to Jai. I guess we're all all alone. We're doing. Oh, hey, Protestant. You sure you can be? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yep. What time do you think you got to go? Okay. Then I'm gonna have to do this. I'm gonna have to do this myself. All right. Do this myself. Hold on. Let's see. I hope this is a good time. I thought it'd be a good time. 6 p.m. in New York. What are you guys doing? May the Lord Jesus, if he's pleased to do so, protect us from COVID-19 and the effects of COVID-19. Another family member died from the effects of COVID-19. So pray that the Lord Jesus will guide us and protect us, especially with me, because I'm going to be meeting people at their homes this Thursday, that God in his mercy will protect us as we gather to glorify Jesus Christ in a home Bible study, right? So we have to trust the Lord. May he destroy our fears and our doubts and belief. Okay, folks, I guess we're going to have to begin. I don't know if YouTube is shadow banned me again. Oh, well, yeah, this is now how many people now? I think this is the third individual that I know died from COVID-19 complications, right? And this lady who just passed away, she was 64 years old, right? She was 64 years old. I knew her from Chicago. I knew her for many years because her sister was married to my first cousin. 64 years old, be leaves behind her husband, her children, and grandchildren. And we trust that she's now in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what are we going to do? She got COVID and... She suffered the complications, passed away, so she was 64. And then my best friend from childhood, my, my, my childhood friend, my best friend from childhood, his mother was up there in age. I believe she was 79, but she got COVID-19, and then she died of complications of COVID because she had pneumonia. And because of her age and frailing health to begin with, she entered into glory and to the rest of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then someone before her, who was it? Yeah, so I know people that – so pray again for God's miraculous protection upon us because Thursday I'm meeting people at their home. I hope I don't get them sick. I pray I don't have it. They don't get me sick. But now that said, I guess we're going to begin. I wonder – I want to see something. Hold on. Let me just check something so we're going to begin. I wish I knew the words of the song. I'm going to learn the words of the song, I promise you. If you don't believe me, ask me. All right. Okay, with that said, let's begin. Okay, what is the topic today? Ask the Lord to help me to focus, not be distracted. Okay? Yeah, I know, because here's the thing Jesus saves. Depending on who you hear, either COVID-19 is overblown and it's a government conspiracy to destroy the economy and make sure that Donald Trump doesn't get elected, right? Or if you hear the other side, COVID-19 is real. It is a real virus, and people are really suffering from it and dying from it. And I know people who got it and suffered complications from COVID who died. But again, they'll say, well, they already had bad health to begin with. And so COVID just <clears throat> complicated the matter. Well, this young lady, she's 64. That's young. Prior to getting COVID-19, she was okay. She was in relatively good health. She died. Right. And everything ultimately is in the hands of the triumph God, the sovereign God. So Again, you don't know who to believe anymore. Like even the other day, there was a, a debate that broke out when I was answering the questions of that former Hindu who's now a believer in Jesus Christ. You have people who think vaccinations are good for children to help them fight these viruses. Others will say, no, vaccin vaccinations are poison and do much more damage than good. How do you know who's right? And then you have the people say, the earth is flat, and it's a government conspiracy to attack the Bible, discredit the Bible, because the Bible teaches that the earth is flat. And so the world wants you to believe it's round so you can reject the Bible, right? I mean, so you see? And ultimately, at the end of the day, at the end of the day God knows what is true because he is truth. And he sees everything perfectly as they are because he is truth and he's perfect. 
and his perception is perfect. We here on this planet, maggots, we struggle to know what is true when it comes to these issues, right? Is COVID-19 overblown? Is it a government conspiracy? Is it a genuine concern? Do vaccinations help or are they doing greater damage <clears throat> and killing our children, right? The Lord knows and we entrust our lives to the Lord. Okay, now, what's the topic? Now, Protestant, let me know when you have to check out. The topic today is, did our Lord Jesus Christ claim to be the I am of Exodus 3, verse 14? Did our Lord Jesus claim to be the I am of Exodus 3, verse 14? Now, let's go to John 8, 58. Protestant is here to serve us until he has to go, right? So thank the Lord that he can be of service because it makes it easier for me because if not, then I'm going to have to just read the verses without copying and pasting. Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Okay, so notice, before Abraham was, I am. Now, let's compare that to Exodus 3, verse 14. And Jai, are they listening on Discord? So all the regular crowd, are they still there listening? Or so have some checked out? Or have they actually increased? Exodus 3, verse 14. So you understand the issue. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. I am has sent me to you. Oh, so the ones who checked out were not of us. Okay. Okay, now, folks, to understand the issue at hand, to understand the issue of hand, one of the passages or one of the arguments that Trinitarians present to show that the historical Jesus, who is the Christ of faith, the historical Jesus is the Jesus who walked this earth and claimed to be God and did miracles to prove he's God. And we have the accurate, inspired record of what the historical Jesus said and did in the Gospels. And the other books of the New Testament recount the actual history of how Jesus sent out his followers in the power of the Holy Spirit to build the church <clears throat> and lay the foundation for the church and also instruct the church on the do's and don'ts of the Christian life. And it's been preserved by God as a faithful witness to Jesus, his apostles, to the formation of the church and the foundational teachings that all Christians born of the Spirit must know, must affirm, and live out in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's the 27 books of the New Testament. Now, with that said, one of the arguments that Christians will use to show that Jesus claimed to be God is they'll go to John 8, 58. Now, let me know. I'm making sense. I'm not confusing you guys because I wanted to do a session just on this because this often comes up, and I want to do a session and have it saved for perpetuity by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ so others can come and watch these sessions and learn and benefit the do's and don'ts of evangelizing and doing apologetics. One of the arguments you'll find in apologetic literature, books, articles, pamphlets produced by Trinitarian apologists, and in sessions to show that Jesus claimed to be God is they'll go to John 8, 58, and they'll say, see, Jesus said, before Abraham was born, I am, and Jesus is claiming the name of God, the name that God gave to Moses in Exodus 3, 14, when Moses said, when I go to the children of Israel and say, the God of your fathers has sent me and ask me, what is his name? That's Exodus 3, 13. God responds in Exodus 3, 14. Tell them I am who I am. I am that I am. Tell them I am has sent me to you. And so, see, God says to Moses, my name is I am. Jesus says before Abraham was born, I am. Jesus claimed to be the God of Moses. Simple, right? Simple, right? Is that simple? Just want to make sure you're getting what the arguments I could proceed. Simple, right? Clear cut to the point. Jesus claimed to be the God of Moses. Not if you're doing evangelism and apologetics. If you are not evangelizing, folks, and you're not doing apologetics against those who oppose the truth of Christianity, be they Jehovah's Witnesses or Unitarians or Muslims, then yes, this argument will work for those who do not know much about the Bible or the arguments by those who oppose our Trinitarian faith. 
But if you have done evangelism, you're evangelizing the world, atheists, agnostics, Hindus, Buddhists, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, you name them, and you're doing apologetics, you'll see why John 8, 58 and Exodus 3, 14 doesn't prove your position, doesn't prove your case. Are you now ready for the response by the anti-Trinitarians to these passages and how to refute them? Right? So I'm going to show you the objection to our use of these passages. And Lord Jesus willing, by the grace of God, by the Holy Spirit, saving me from error, how to respond to that objection. Good. We got Ortho Christos here because he'll confirm because I believe you can read the Greek, right? You can read the Greek. And the Orthodox Church in its manifold manifestations, they go by the Greek version of the Old Testament. They go by the Greek version of the Old Testament, which is commonly referred to as the Septuagint, the Septuagint, which comes from Septuaginta. See, I'm trying to give you meat. You may not be entertained, but I'm hoping by the grace of God's Spirit, you'll be thoroughly educated. And as the Spirit guides me to speak truth clearly without error, you'll be educated what you're supposed to know and why you're supposed to know it and believe it. So you'll be better informed and have a more deeper understanding of your faith and the scriptures that God has inspired. The Orthodox Church, and you have here Orthodox Christians joining us, they'll confirm this. They follow the Greek version of the Old Testament, which is commonly referred to as the Septuagint. Now, this is related to my talk, so I'm giving you education. Please don't go to sleep. Stay awake and pay attention. The reason why it's called the Septuagint this set the word septuagint comes from latin septuaginta septuaginta you with me there hopefully i'm making sense and i'm not confusing you septuaginta okay septuaginta which means 70. it's a latin word for 70. why is the greek version of the old testament called the 70. Because there's an early tradition that says 70, 72, or 70 Jewish scholars translated the first five books of Moses into Greek. So this is known as the translation of the 70. Do you see why it's called the Septuagint? Even the Roman numerals, LXX. L is the Roman numeral for 50. X is 10. So LXX means 70. So there's an early tradition that says that about 280 years before the birth of our Lord, 280 years before the birth of our Lord, a group of 70 Jewish scholars translated the books of Moses from Hebrew into Greek. So it became known as the translation of the 70. Right? Some will say 72. You understand why it's called the Septuagint? So I'm trying to educate you guys. I'm going to go slowly and trying to educate you. So you see why the Greek versions of the Old Testament are typically referred to as the translation of the 70 or called Septuagint. Did everyone get that before I move on? That's going to be relevant to my discussion. Yeah, I know that, Goose. That's why I said 70. It's called the translation of 70. But some say it was 72. But still, it's called Septuagint, which means 70. Clear, right? You got that. Now, the Orthodox know this. The Catholics know this. Praise the Lord Jesus for you, child of Jesus. Born again, follower of Trinity. A fellow Assyrian, an ethnic Assyrian, who is in love with the triumph God, born of the Spirit of the Lord Jesus. Amen. May we grow in love with Jesus together. Okay, everyone with me? I just want to make sure. Because this is going to be important in my discussion. It's not... Irrelevant. It's relevant to my discussion. It's going to be important to my... No, you're, I know you're not correcting me, Goose. I understand. That's why I said that there are some say it was 72. 77, just like in Luke 10, 17, Goose, you have a variant reading in the copies of Luke. Some say the 70 returned. Some copies, other copies say 72 returned. Right? So, Goose, you're aware of this, that it's called the Septuaginta, Septuagint, which means 70. And then it's represented by the Roman numerals LXX. L in Roman numeral means 50. X means 10. So L 
50 X 10 X 10 50 plus 20 70. So I just want to be clear. Was that a noise for my part? How you doing? Come on in. Do you hear me? Everyone got it? Okay. Now, if you got that, if you got that, you're going to see why it's important. I can't tell from Goose's picture if that's a brother or a sister because you, the camera's far and your pictures look distant. And may the Lord Jesus perfect my physical sight and my spiritual sight. As I'm getting older, I'm going to need glasses. Just want to make sure you got that so I can move on to the next point. I want to give you meat. And I'm trusting the Spirit to save me from error to give you solid meat. Solid meat, right? Strengthening your faith. Okay, now, why is it that John 8, 58 and Exodus 3, verse 14, Kingsley, can you do me a favor, brother? When someone says in the comment section, move on, I take it as if they're telling me that I'm boring them and they're losing patience and they're telling me what to do. Do me a favor. Don't tell me to move on because I'm going to take it as you being rude to me. Don't cause me to stumble so I don't cause others to stumble. May the Lord save us from our flesh. No, I can't say because your picture is far away. Okay? Now, with that said, what's the problem with connecting John 8, 58, where Jesus says, before Abraham was born, I am, with Exodus 3, 14? Don't we find in Exodus 3, 14, Jehovah, Yahweh, saying to Moses, I am that I am. Tell the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. Well, depending on what translation you read, and if you are an astute reader that reads the footnotes, what do I mean? Let me give you a link. I'm going to give you a link. What I want you to do, you're going to go here. I'm going to give you a link so you can read this online. The anti-Trinitarians are going to use this argument against you. I'm giving you the actual objection by those who oppose the Trinity and deity of Christ to our proof texts. Here you go. Go here. Click on this link. Link The New International Version. The New International Version. NIV. If you guys are astute readers, meaning you read the Bible carefully to understand it with depth, then you won't simply skip over the notes provided by your translations at the bottom. In your modern versions of the Bible, English versions, most likely your version, your English translation will have notes. So if you go here, if you go here, I gave you the link. There's a note provided by the NIV in Exodus 3.14. You see the, the small lowercase a in brackets, right? And so when you see that low, lowercase a in brackets, you look at the note and it says that it can also be translated, I will be what I will be. You guys see it? I will be what I will be. In other words, the Trinitarian scholars, the evangelical scholars that translated the NIV are telling you, telling you that the Hebrew words, because Exodus 3.14 is written in Hebrew, can also be translated, I will be what I will be. Everyone got it? I need your attention, folks, because you're getting meat. Guys, I'm not exaggerating when I tell you. There are people who go to seminary that don't even get this information. Some seminaries will give them this information, but you have people who go to seminary and come out of seminary, and they don't know this stuff. Okay? I'm not lying. I'm not lying to you. Can I give you a testimony to confirm it? Can I give you a testimony to confirm it? True story that happened about a year ago? You want to hear this? You want to be shocked? Okay, let me give you a story. True story. Again, the Lord is hearing me if I'm lying. I'm going to give an answer to the Lord if I'm lying. A dear brother of mine, a fellow apologist who loves Jesus Christ, who is a philosopher, was teaching a postgraduate class, right, for a group of students who go to Trinity Evangelical Divinity Seminary. TEDS, Trinity Evangelical Divinity <clears throat> Seminary, right? TEDS. It's located in Deerfield, Illinois. One of the professors there is Donald A. Carson, considered one of the leading 
New, uh, scholars of the Greek New Testament, and he's written commentaries. True story. The Lord is hearing him if I'm lying. I'm going to give an out count to him if I'm lying. He asked me to come in and present the Muslim side. I think it was about nine students. Now, remember, this is a seminary, guys. Seminary. This is not high school or Bible college. Seminary. Okay. He told me, come in acting like a Muslim and give the typical Muslim arguments. Folks, I am not lying. I think there were nine. Nine Christians at seminary. This is considered one of the top seminaries in America. Okay. I presented the Muslim case against the Bible, the Trinity. They were stumped, stupefied, and had no answers. A huge embarrassment. A huge embarrassment. If I'm lying, I will give an answer to the Lord Jesus Christ. And my friend can confirm, but I don't want to mention his name because I don't want to embarrass him students. It wasn't his fault. He's a great brother, top-notch philosopher, loves the Lord. So I don't want to mention him by name. Okay, It's not his fault. Right? They could not answer. So about 45 minutes, 50 minutes, they took a break, and I came back, and I said, by the way, I'm a Christian. And they sighed a relief. They go, oh. And then I spent the remainder of time refuting the objections I raised against them when they had no answers. It wasn't even teaching apologetics, Charles. They didn't even teach him the basics of the faith because the objections had to do with the core basics of the Christian faith and the authority of Scripture. So I say that to show you, you guys are blessed. God is raising up men and women. I pray I'm one of them. I pray I'm one of them. On social media, using platforms like YouTube to give you top-notch information that even people in seminary are not getting for free because of Jesus' love for his church, Jesus' love for the children of God that he's purchased, born of his spirit, raising up teachers and putting it in their hearts to teach them. And you're getting it for free. Honestly. Okay, so please be blessed. Thank the Lord for this blessing. Don't take advantage of it. Say, thank you, Jesus, that you, you brought me and led me to these teachers to teach me your word. Now give me the power to live your word and honor you by proclaiming your word without shame and living in love with you. Okay, so what's the problem with appealing to Exodus 3.14? Okay. Exodus 3.14 again. In Exodus 3.14, in a standard English translation, it will translate it as, God said to Moses, tell the Israelites, my name is, I am who I am. Tell them, I am has sent me to you. But here's the problem. If you're reading the notes to your translations, like the NIV, the NIV has a note saying this, or I will be what I will be. I will be, what I will be. So wait, does the Hebrew of Exodus 3.14 say, I am who I am? Or does it say, I will be what I will be? You with me there? No, it's not both. Can't be both. I am is not the same as I will be. No. But now let me give you other translations. Pay attention now. Pay careful attention to what I'm saying and to the notes in your translations. Now, if you have a hard copy of the Bible, guys, if you have a Bible, NIV, ESV, whatever it is, open it up to Exodus 3.14. See if you have a note there. I'm using the online version. Let's see English Standard Version. Here it is, ESV, English Standard Version. Guys, please click on these links and read it for yourself. There's the link, ESV. It has a note. And it, too, has a lowercase a in brackets after I am who I am. And notice what the ESV tells you. Here it is, ESV. ESV, guys, watch here. Here's the note, posting it in the text. Or I am what I am, or I will be what I will be. So they're telling you the Hebrew phrase, and I'll tell you what the Hebrew phrase is in a minute, can be translated, I will be what I will be. 
Oh, wow. I thought God said I am. But here they're telling me the Hebrew may actually suggest that God was saying, I will be, not I am. So did God say I am or did he say I will be? You see the point now? I'm going to give you a few more examples of this so we can engage the discussion. Do you understand now what the point is? Did God in Hebrew say, I am who I am? Or did he say, I will be what I will be? Because the Hebrew phrasing, that's where the debate hinges. And let me give you the Hebrew. Ehyeh, Ashir, Ehyeh. Let me spell it for you, transliterate it for you. And it's in the comments. Ehyeh, Ashir, Ashir, Ehyeh. It's the word Ehyeh. Should that word Ehyeh be I am or I will be? Labin, thank you for insulting me, sister. I appreciate it. Or brother. Guys, I'm doing a session on the Hebrew, and he says, do we have someone here with enough knowledge in Hebrew to answer it? <laughs> what do you think I'm doing the session for? <laughs> oh, that was funny, dude. Sonia, hopefully by the grace of Jesus, he refreshes you and keeps you up to hear the entire session. And shine his face on your family. And I pray for that for everyone in Jesus' name. Why do you think I'm here, buddy? Why do you think I'm doing this session? Is there anyone here to help us? Hey, please, if somebody knows Hebrew, help us, man. Why do you think I'm doing this session? Oh! <laughs> oh, boy. That was funny, right? Okay, now, you got it now? Okay, so ESV footnote. Yes, because you got to laugh at someone like, anybody here with Hebrew cancer? This guy's throwing my faith. I thought I was coming here, here in the Trinitarian, thinking my faith in the Trinity, but this man is throwing my faith. Timmy, why are you doing it to me, Timmy? Okay. So let me give you another example. That was funny, man. I, I, I got to give you credit. Hold on. Let, let's look at another one. Let's see. Which one should I look at? Let's see. Uh, let me look at the NET, the New English Translation. Hold on. Let me see. Oh, this one has a nice note. This one has a very nice note. Here you go. NET Bible. NET Bible. I'm going to read the note. Are you guys ready? It's too long for me to quote. Can I read the note? New English Translation done by Evangelical Trinitarians. Can I read the note? You guys ready? There's the link. All right. I can't hear you. I need to come more content. Okay, now let me read the note for you. Note the verb form here used is ehye, the cal imperfect. And I gave you the link so you can read the note for yourself. First person common singular of the verb haya. What is it saying? Ehye comes from the verb haya. Remember these words, guys. Ehye, haya. It forms an excellent par paro nomasia with the name. So when God used the verb to express his name, he used this form saying, I am. When his people refer to him as Yahweh, which is a third person masculine singular form of the same verb, they say he is. Now watch. Some commentators argue for a future tense translation. I will be. Who I will be. Catch here. Now watch. Some commentators here say that Ehye should be rendered, I will be what I will be. Now let's read the note. Because the verb has an active quality about it. And the Israelites lived in the light of the promises for the future. They argue that I am would be of little help to the Israelites in bondage. But a translation of I will be does not effectively do much more except restrict, restrict it to the future. The idea of the verb would certainly indicate that God is not bound by time. And while he is present, I am. He will always be present, even in the future. So I am would embrace that as well. Okay, now, let me unpack what it's saying. Scholars are divided. Should, eh, yeah, let me spell it out for you. And let me know what you're following with me. I'm trying to make this technical stuff very easy to understand. So you don't have to be a scholar in seminary to understand it. Because I didn't go to seminary or college. 
And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I understand it. The same Holy Spirit living in you will give you the same grace to understand it. No seminary, never been to seminary or university or college. The Holy Spirit can take a fool like me and enable me to be wise for the glory of Jesus. He can do that for you. Okay, they're saying this verb, ehye, ehye, scholars debate. Should it be I will be or should it be I am? Now, they're arguing it's better to translate it I am because when you say I am, that refers to God being timeless. He's not bound to time. He's not contained by time. So he is and he'll always be. So when you translate it I am, it can refer to the present, future, and past because he is. He'll always be, always been, always is, always shall be. Other scholars say, no, it should be future. I will be. Now, let me read the rest of it, and I'm going to explain all of this. It's going to take time for me to explain. Now, they're going to the Greek version. Now, you guys see why I kept talking about the Greek? You guys see why I kept talking about the Greek? Because now they're going to appeal to the Greek translation of Exodus 3.14. The Greek translation of Exodus 3.14. The Greek translation of the Old Testament used a participle, participle, that's a verbal adjective, a verb that describes an action or a quality, right? Okay, anyway, to capture the idea, and several times in the gospel, Jesus used the powerful I am with this, with this significance. The point is that Yahweh is sovereignly independent of all creation and that, in it, that his presence guarantees the fulfillment of the covenant. Others argue for a causative, hyphal translation of I will cause to be. But nowhere in the Bible does this verb appear in hyphal or pile form. These are different forms of verbs. A good summary of the views can be found in G.H. Park Taylor, Yahweh, the divine name in the Bible. See among the many articles, and they give you a list where you can go back and then read the scholarly literature and the debates among scholars. You get two scholars, you get 10,000 opinions, right? So there you go. Now, let me sum up what they're saying. And we're going to get into the response. The verb ahye. Follow with me, guys. The verb ahye comes from the verb haya. I'm spelling these words out in English letters, transliterating them for you in the comment section. Ahye comes from haya. Okay, everyone with me so far? Now we're going to go into me. I hope you're going to be blessed by it and know your Bible more and know your God more intimately. And I pray that for all of us. Okay. Ehye comes from haya. Haya is future tense, tense. It's a future tense verb, meaning shall be. Okay? So because of that, scholars say, Ehye, being future tense, should be rendered I will be. Others say it's not just future tense. It's a causative verb, meaning it's a verb that speaks of something being caused. Causing something to be, causing something to come into play, into existence, causing something to come to pass. Therefore, Ahia should be rendered, I will cause to be. Everyone with me? Okay, Eric, in time, brother. Just pray for me in time. I'll do that. Okay? I'll be the goat. As long as women still find me handsome enough that there's a godly woman who's beautiful, a model who loves Jesus, will marry me. Unless that goat's going to keep me single and become a, a monk, then that's a different story. Anyway, I'm just kidding. Focus here. I'm just playing with you guys. Just kidding. Okay. So if I'm confusing you, let me know. Let me repeat the issues again. Ehye comes from the verb haya. Hey, I'm spelling it there. Hayas future tense. It means will be, to become, to be, right? Future tense. So because it's future tense, people say, scholars say, Ehye should be translated, I will be. However, however, some say it's not just future tense. It's a causative verb. It's a verb that refers to something being caused, causing something to be. Causing something to take place. Causing something to come into existence. So they say, Ehye should be actually be rendered, I will 
cause or yeah, I will cause to be. You with me there? You see what the debate is before I move on into the meat. I'm just preparing you for the issues. Amen. We're all married to Jesus Christ. Everyone born in the spirit is married to Jesus Christ, Alma. But even the Lord allows those who are members of his body to marry one another and enjoy each other until glory, where there'll be no marriages except Christ and, and his bride. So anyway, everyone, everyone with me, right? Is someone confused? Let me know. If you're confused, I'm going to, because I'll do a part two, guys. I promise you, I will. I'll do a part two. Because I'm not rushing to do this. I want you to get it. And I want you to learn it, make it second nature, and teach others. So you can upload my videos, make clips, take my material, use it, and teach it. Use it. Okay. No one's confused? All right. So should it be I will be? Should it be I'll cause to be? Should it be I am? That's the debate. Now, here's it, what's interesting. Let me show you how the Jehovah Witness Bible translates Exodus 3.14. Protestant, are you there? Yeah, rewind it from the beginning, Michaela, and try to then go from the beginning, start watching from the beginning, and catch up. Okay, now notice how the Jehovah Witness Bible renders Exodus 3, verse 14. Exodus 3, 14. This is the Jehovah Witness Bible. So God said to Moses, I will become what I choose to become. Oh, wow. And he added, this is what you are to say to the Israelites. I will become has sent me to you. My goodness. The Jehovah Witness Bible translated as a causative verb, future tense. You caught it? Here's a New World Translation. God said to Moses, I will become what I choose to become. And he said, he added, this is what you are to say to the Israelites. I will become has sent me to you. Now, let's compare John 8, 58. Not in the Jehovah Witness Bible. Don't quote the Jehovah Witness Bible yet. Quote the version you were quoting earlier. King James, in my opinion, is the king of English translations. That's my conviction. But again, if it's hard on people to read, we'll read something else. Be Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. I think this is a new King James version. Stick with it. It's okay. So notice Jesus said, I am here, right? King James, new King James, they read the same way. Be Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. But now watch, watch. New World Translation of the Jehovah's Witnesses, John 8, 58. John 8, 58, guys. Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham came into existence, I have been. Wow. Not only does the Jehovah Witness Bible translate John 8, 58 as I have been, not I am. They also do that for Exodus 3, 14. Instead of God saying to Moses, I am, I shall prove to be. Hmm. <whistles> Did you catch how they rendered it? You see the Jehovah Witness Bible? Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham came into existence, I have been. Oh, wow. Everyone there? You went to sleep. You caught it? I want to make sure you caught it before I move on. So not only in Exodus 3, 14, Joe Witness Bible is, I shall prove to be, instead of I am. Even in John 8, 58, they have Jesus saying, before Abraham came into existence, I have been. I have been. So you see why now you cannot simply quote John 8, 58 with Exodus 3, 14 to prove Jesus claimed to be the God of Moses because you may run into the wrong anti-Trinitarian, Jehovah Witness, Unitarian Muslim who's studying what the scholarly literature is saying and are ready to shoot you down. You see the point now? You see the point now? 
You see, if you're evangelizing as you're supposed to, we're all supposed to evangelize, and doing apologetics, which you should do, you're going to run into a variety of people, agnostic, atheists, Muslims, Unitarians, Jehovah's Witnesses, and Mormons, and you're going to run into people who are studying to destroy your faith and refute Christianity, and they'll say, no, no, that's not what the Greek says. That's not what the Hebrew says. Here, let me show you from your own footnotes. And you sit there and say, oh, wow, but my pastor quoted John 8, 58, where Jesus says, I am, and then connected with Exodus 3, 14, where God said to Moses, I am. He never told me about all these different opinions. And you get busted. Apologetics means the art and science of defending Christianity, Jared. Apologetics, apologist, apologia, meaning defense, a reason defense. The art and science of giving a defense for Christianity. No, Lois, they'll get around that. I'll come back to that. I'll come there in a minute, Lois. Just bear with me as I show you why you need to be prepared for this. You think the arguments that you used to show Jesus is God because it works among your circle. It works among those like you who believe in the Trinity are airtight arguments until you meet an anti-Trinitarian who studied to refute you and now they don't sound as strong anymore. Like Proverbs 18, 17. Don't ask me about Gene Kim and King James right now. That's not the topic, William. Focus on the topic. Proverbs 18, 17. Watch here. Proverbs 18, 17. The first one to plead his cause seems right until his neighbor comes and examines him. See what the Bible's telling you? The first person speaking can sound convincing until someone comes and questions him and puts holes in his argumentation, which is why you who love God and love truth, you who love the triune God and love his truth and love his Bible, you need to listen to a variety of voices within the body of Jesus Christ. What do I mean? You're a Catholic. You shouldn't just be listening to Catholics. Listen to Protestants, Orthodox, Assyrian Church of the East, Coptic. You're Protestant. You should also be listening to to Catholics, Orthodox, Assyrian Church, these Coptics. Why? To see the variety of voices, what they're seeing about the Bible, church tradition, and yield to the Spirit, submit to the Spirit, and beg the Spirit to guide you into all truth, to see who's wrong, who's right. And I'm practicing that. I listen to Catholics. I listen to Orthodox, Coptics, Assyrian Church of these. And within Protestantism, I listen to a variety of Protestant voices. And when you do, you'll be stronger for it. You'll be sharper for it. Right? You'll be more knowledgeable. You'll know your Bible better. You'll know the God of the Bible better. And know his will better. And love him more perfectly. Why do you think on my YouTube channel, I'm inviting Catholics to make their case? Protestants to make their case. Orthodox, and I'm going to get them. I'm trying to get the best of all these expressions. I'm looking for Protestants. I'm looking for Orthodox, and I'll keep looking. And let them make their case so it's right there. Sola Scriptura, Protestant perspective. And I'll give you several different Protestants. Catholic perspective. several, So that you can hear because you have nothing to lose if you love God and you love his truth and love his Bible and know the Holy Spirit is alive in you and that he's guiding you, then you have nothing to lose. You're just going to become sharper, better, holier, more knowledgeable, more pleasing to God, and more like Christ. But you have to be open. You have to be open. And not automatically assume the other side is wrong. Right? And then shut your ears. No, well, oh, it's a Protestant. No, I'm not going to. Oh, it's a Catholic. No. No, listen. All right, let me just, I want to understand that position. Hmm, that was a good point. Not too good, right? And, and by the way, folks, when I invite some of the brothers, and they are our brothers, I do not know beforehand, I do not know beforehand how their approach will be. So I brought a few voices that came off very strong and argumentative and offended many people. 
That is beyond my control because I didn't expect that, right? So expect, I'll bring people who may be very aggressive and maybe even offensive, but that's not because I asked them to or I was aware that's how they're going to approach the subject, okay? I don't know. I don't know, right? And if Nadir, the son of Muta, whose mother did Muta and he did Muta's here, send them to Mecca, get them out of here. So keep that in mind. If you're not evangelizing and doing apologetics, then you won't be aware of how the anti-Trinitarians are going to refute your appeal to John 8, 58 and Exodus 3, verse 14. You get my point? You get my point? So a Jehovah Witness will say, no, Jesus didn't claim to be the God of Moses. What do you mean? Jesus said, before Abraham was born, I am. They'll say, well, no, the Greek doesn't say I am. It says I have been in the context. And God didn't say to Moses, I am. He said, I shall prove to be. What are you talking about? Boom, and they show you in their Bible. And then they will quote scholarly literature, scholars that say yes. You see the point? Now, with that in the background as a backdrop, are we ready now to proceed? Are we ready now to proceed? Okay, now, what was the debate? Exodus 3.14, the verb is ehye. Here's the transliteration, ehye. Ehye comes from haya. It's future tense. And it can be a causative verb. I will be or I'll cause to be. I'll cause to become. Okay. Ehye haya. So that's the first point. Now, side note. Are you aware that Ehye and the divine name Yahweh or Yahweh or Yahovah, however you want to pronounce it, they come from that same verb, Haya? The name God, Yahovah, Yod He Vav He or Yod He Wow He, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahovah, and Ehye come from Haya. You wear that now? Not in Hebrew. Jesus That's Arabic. Okay. So you see the connection with God saying, Ehye, Yahovah. What do I mean? Let's go to Exodus 3. Do me a favor. Protestant. Can you quote the World English Bible? The World English Bible, it's on BibleGateway.com. Exodus 3, 14 and 15. How are you, Aziza Martin? I just want to say hi to all my Assyrian, Chaldean brothers and sisters who are born of the Spirit, who love Jesus Christ. Not only are you ethnically my family, you are spiritually my family, which is more important. And I bless all my spiritual brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus. I love you all. Okay, Protestant, you there, bro? World English Bible. Okay, guys, thank, thank Protestant. Now watch here. World English Bible. God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, you shall tell the children of Israel this. I am has sent me to you. Now in verse 15. Watch here. Verse 15. There's going to be a lot of meat today, guys. And I think I'm going to have to do a part two. A lot of meat. Good suggestion. Someone suggested. I, you know, I said it and they confirmed it. Exodus 14 from the World English Bible. Just for this one. Before the rapture, brother. Okay, now, God said moreover to Moses, you shall tell the children of Israel this, Yahweh, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. Did you catch it? Right after he says, tell Israel, Ehye sent me to you. In the next verse, he says, my name is yod he vav he Yahovah. Ehye, yeah, you see? They're connected, right? So notice what you learn. The verb, Ehye, and the divine name, Yahweh or Yahweh, right, are connected together. Why? Because they come from, they come from the verb, Ayah. You with me there? Did you get it now? The divine name, Yahovah, and this verb in Exodus 3.14, Ehyeh, 
are connected because they come from the verb haya. That's why after God says, tell Israel, Ehyeh has sent me to you. Next verse, I am Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahovah, who sent you. Okay, everyone there? Now you can go back to the New King James Version. Everyone got it? Okay, then. Second point I want you to catch. Let's go to Exodus 3, verse 12, and then skip to 14. Exodus 3, verse 12, and verse 14. Yeah, Catholic, are, is, uh, so far are you with me, or am I losing you? I don't mind, because I'm not going to rush through this. Okay, guys, read with me Exodus 3, 12, and 14. I want you to pay attention where God says in 12, so he said... I will certainly be with you. Remember that word. I will certainly be with you. And this shall be signed to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. And then we skip to 15. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Now one more time, post Exodus 3.12. It's so, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over it again until it helps you. One more time, Exodus 3, 12. But now put in the King James Version. Put in the King James Version. So he said, I will certainly be with you. Poor guy, I don't pay him any, anything for this. And yet I overwork him. Okay? I will certainly be with you. And this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Now, in the King James Version. And he said... Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, a sign unto thee, that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. Now, did you see that word, I will be? You see in verse 12 where it says, certainly I will be? Do you guys see that? I will be. Okay. And now I want to show you something. Why scholars believe that in Exodus 3.14, it should be translated, I will be. Okay, if you see it, you see it says, I will be? I need more people, let me know. They're following with me because we're dropping people like flat. People leave and say, man, I can't handle this, bro. All right. Okay, now here it is. Here is the link to the interlinear Old Testament. Click on that link. Click on it. You don't need to read Hebrew to see. Do you see what the word I will be is? It's ehyeh. It's ehyeh. It's the same verb in Exodus 3.14. It's the same verb. Ehyeh. Why, Omer? Ki ehyeh imak. Ehyeh. You caught it? It's the same verb, right? Sonny, everyone else, are you seeing it? So isn't God saying... In Exodus 3, 12, don't worry, Moses. I will be with you when you go to Pharaoh. I will be with you when you bring them out of Egypt. And I will be with you when you enter the wilderness and I meet you on the mountain. Isn't he speaking future? I will be with you. So Ehyeh means not I am with you. I am already. I will be with you when you go to Pharaoh. I will be with you when you bring them out of Egypt. And then I will meet you on the mountain. So do you see in Exodus 3.12, the verb ahyeh means future, right? I will be. So then, if ahyeh in verse 12 is future, doesn't that make a strong argument that in verse 14, that same verb ahyeh should also be future, I will be, because it's the same verb? Here it is. You see the point now? You guys are learning top-notch stuff by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Praise you, Holy Spirit, for giving this understanding. So we can know your word and love Jesus more, the Father, Son. Okay? Now go here and see. Go there and see Exodus 3.14.
Go there and see that it's the same verb. Eh, yeah. Yeah, don't worry. I'll, I'll shut down, Tovia. Oh, there's my daughters. Hold on. Bob and Bobby, I'm on a live stream, but it's okay. I still want to say hi to you. Love you, Baba. I want to say hi to everyone. Hi. Guys, tell me Jesus Christ has not blessed me with the most beautiful girls in the world. Her and her baby sister, angels, my heart from Jesus. Cry out to Jesus, pray and fast for us that Jesus will bring them in my arms and I love them and raise them, put them asleep. They're all looking at you, sending you hearts, saying we love you. Tell me I'm not blessed. The most beautiful girls in the world. I love these girls. My heart from Jesus. We love you and your sister Zippy Zipporah. Baba. Can I text you to call me when I'm done? Okay. And will you promise me? What time? Uh, maybe another hour. I'm going to text you. Can you promise, promise me to call me? Because I miss you. It's been a week. I miss you too. Okay. Now, today I want you to watch a movie with mommy. Tell mommy to go to a YouTube video or Amazon and watch the movie Fatima. Fatima. Okay. It's about the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. The blessed mother of our Lord Jesus, Mary. It's a story, true story. I want you to watch it. Okay? Okay. Okay. It's okay. Say, love you guys. Look, they're looking at you. Love you guys. All right. Hey, Bob. Okay, I'll, I'll text you. Okay. Bye, I love you. Let's it. Baba, Jesus bless you. Ah, my heart. Ah, my heart. Over one year, guys. Our God lives. Jesus is alive. The Holy Spirit is almighty. He can do a miracle. Ask the Lord to keep them healthy. Keep me healthy from COVID. Provide for us and bring them. I have not kissed them. I have not hugged them. And I have not put them asleep in over a year. Ah, my heart. All right, let's focus. Okay. You guys ready? Let's focus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, my God. Father, Son, Spirit. We love you. All right. Okay, with that said, let's focus. It is. It's from the pit of hell, Alexandra. Yeah, they are. The reason why they're part of your lives, Millie, because you guys are part of my life. Yeah. Anyway. Let's focus now. I'm giving you guys a chance to now refocus in Jesus' name so we can focus. Okay. So, guys, now Catholic Crusader, everyone else, did you see in Exodus 3.12 the same verb is used, ehye, and there God is saying to Moses, I will be with you when you go to Pharaoh. I will be with you when you bring Israel out, and I will be there to meet you on the mount so that ehye is future. I will be. So in light of verse 12, doesn't it make more sense than in Exodus 3.14, Exodus 3, 14, when God says, tell Israel, eh, yeah, the same verb, that it should be, I will be, because what God is telling Israel is, I will be with you. I'll be there. I will be there to watch you, to guide you, to protect you, to save you. And I will be there with you in the wilderness. Right? So you can make a strong case that eh, yeah, that verb is future. That God is saying, I will be with you. I will be there when you go to Pharaoh. I will be with my people Israel. I will bless them. I will bring them into the wilderness and into the promised land. Right? Everyone got that? Right? Yes, John. All of God's promises for his people apply to all his people in all ages until Jesus returns. Of course. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, now, now here's the thing. If you believe it makes more sense that it's future, I will be, because it is a future tense verb, does that mean we can no longer connect it with Jesus? Does that mean we can no longer connect it with Jesus? Hold on. Can we connect with Jesus? Yes, we can. Do you know why? Let me tell you why we can connect with Jesus. Are you guys ready? Yeah, we can. Yes, we can. You ready? Connect with Jesus? 
Who's ready? Okay. Exodus 3, verses 1 to 2. Yes, you can connect it with Jesus. Let me show you. Exodus 3, verses 1 to 2. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he fled, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. See, guys, you dropped the ball. It was the angel who told Moses, my name is Ehyeh. It was the angel who told Moses, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was the angel who told Moses, I will be with you. And that angel is Jesus before he became man. What's wrong with you guys, dude? There you go. Yes. That was Jesus speaking. All right. We'll get someone else to take over. Is first last year or any other mod that can post verses? Or not, I'll just read them. You got it? Of course you can connect it with Jesus. Because that was Jesus who appeared. Because the angel of the Lord, if you've been watching my series, reading my articles, or even Anthony Rogers has done the same series too. Angel of the Lord. The word angel in Hebrew, Malach in Greek, Angelos means messenger. This is the messenger of God, sent by God, who is God, claims to be God, does what only God can do, and is worshipped as God, because that's Jesus before he was born of the Blessed Virgin, appearing to the Old Testament saints as the Father's messenger. Come on, guys. What's wrong with you? Everyone got it? Are you focusing or am I distracting you? Now, who do we have here, the mods that can post verses? I got it really quickly. If not, I'm just going to be reading them. Anyone? Mods, who's here who can post? Not, I'm going to have to do it because we, we lost our mind. Mod, okay. So, VJ, can you? All right, all right, we got, okay. Okay, Mary, Mary's going to post. All right, thank you, VJ. Mary, our precious sister. All right, thank you, sister. Go ahead again, Exodus 3, verses 1 to 2. Exodus 3, verses 1 to 2. Watch here, guys. We're going to go through this slowly. Go through this slowly. Okay, pay attention. Yeah, Santiago, get, the, get out of here, dude. Just take a hike. Get this dog out of here, dude. Okay, go ahead, Sister Post. Exodus 3, verses 1 and 2. Yeah, stupid, stupid stuff that they've come up with. Mary, what happened? If it's going to take you too long, then we're going to get rapture, leave you behind. Then we're going to have to go to someone else. Yeah, yeah, let me see. If it's going to take too long, Sister, then we're going to... Okay, good, thank you. Okay, read here. Okay, Protestant. Pins and needles, needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grows. Timmy, Timmy, where is Joey Timmy? Okay. Can we figure out who's going to post? If you're leaving, then let Mary post. But if it's going to take Mary too long, I'm going to have to get someone else to do it. Hold on, Jeremiah. See, now everyone's posting. My goodness, we can't keep, uh, we can't, we can't maintain order. All right, let's try this again. If you're leaving Protestant, then I got to assign someone to do it now. And if it's going to take Mary too long, then I'm going to have to find someone else. So can we at least get this mess settled so we can focus on the topic? Or I'm just going to read the verses. That's it. I'll just read it without posting. That's okay. Okay. So, Mary, will you be able to post? Okay. Will it be quick enough? Can you do it like it won't take too much time to do so? Let's get this in order so we don't get distracted. Let's try this again. And Mary's taking too long to respond. <sighs> Mary, well, one more time, Mary. You're now dragging it. Can you post? Is it going to take too much time to post the verses? 
Okay, that didn't answer my question. Hold on. Uh, Timmy, will, will it take Mary a little too extra time to post verses so that it's going to be slower than normal? Do you think it's going to take a little more time for her to do it? So that if so, I got to then read it or find someone else, Timmy? Because I asked Mary, instead of answering, she went, took about like 30 seconds to post the verse. What do you think? You're not sure either? Okay, hold on. You want to ask Joey? Hey, Joey! Okay, Mary, let's try this again, Mary. Will you be able to post? Okay, see, that's it, sister. We love you. All right, all right. Let me go there. Let me read. Let me start reading. Sorry, Timmy. Sorry, Timmy. Why you do this to me, Timmy? Timmy, why you do this to me? Oh, Timmy, Timmy, why you do this to me, Timmy? Okay, hold on. Let me get it up. I'm going to be reading, and let's go. Let's see what translation. <coughs> Sorry about that. Hold on. Let's start reading. So, guys, I'm just going to have to read it, so I'm not going to be posting anything. And I'll get back to Okay. Exodus 3, we're going to read verses 1 to 6. I'm going to read. Exodus 3, verse 1 to 6. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, not the father. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire. But the bush was not consumed. Let me repeat again who appeared. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire. But the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush does not burn. Don't forget it says angel. Now four. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush. Who called to him from the midst of the bush? God. But I'm, I'm a little confused. I'm a little confused. In verse 2 it said, The angel appeared as a flame of fire in the bush. But in verse 4 it says, It was God that called him out of the bush. Okay. Hmm. A little confused now. Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Now verse 5. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, verse 6, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Man, I'm confused. Guys, I'm confused. Verse 6 says, Moses got afraid to look at God. Verse 4 says, God called him out of the bush. But then verse 2 says, and that was the angel of the Lord. And yet the angel of the Lord, who's the God who called out of the bush, who's the God that Moses was afraid to look on, said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Everyone there? I don't know, Xander, what do you mean? No, you ain't. Well, who are you talking to, me? Everyone got it? So who appeared to Moses as a flame of fire in the bush? Oh, thank you, Xander. I got confused. Sorry about that. The angel of the Lord. Malach Elohim. Malach Il. Malach Yahovah, Yod Hey Vav Hey. Who spoke to him from the bush? The angel who's called God. Who was Moses afraid to look on? The angel who is God. Who said to Moses, I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob? The angel who is God. Who said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, My name is Ehye, Ashir Ehye. I am Yod He Vav He, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the angel of the Lord. Come on, Ender. You've been with me for a long time. If I have to tell you who it is after all this time, I'm going to retire. I'm going to start washing cars for a living. Alexander, you really are confusing me. 
You're saying that's the Holy Spirit? That's block worthy. That calls for a block if you think that was the Holy Spirit. Everyone got it? Not Adonis. Adonai. Not Adonis. Adonis is a false god. Everyone with me there? For the rest of you, Xander, can you get out of here, dude? You need to leave, buddy. You got to go. Get this guy out of here, this heretic who's a modalist heretic. Bye-bye, buddy. Bye-bye. Go back to your Hebrew dictionary. Okay. No, he didn't speak to the parents, Joseph. This again shows your ignorance. If I have to start correcting people, I'm going to start blocking people. Okay. John Olivier, the angel of the Lord, spoke to the parents of Samson. You are right. But for the person who said the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and Mary, I'm going to start blocking you. But, John, you are right, baby. That angel of the Lord that came to Samson's parents, that's the same angel, and he's God. Love you, baby. But if you, Mohammedan, you Muslim who says that angel of the Lord that appeared to Joseph and Mary is the same, no, that's a different angel. That's not this angel. Now, for the rest of you who are paying attention, are you getting who appeared to Moses and who told Moses, I am that I am, I will be who I will be? Before I move on. Now, I'm going to give you further proof that the God who spoke from the bush, the God who told Moses, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who told Moses, I am who I am, or I will be what I will be. And my name is Yahovah, is the angel of the Lord. Let me show you. Acts 7, 30 to 35, and verse 37. Acts 7, okay? 30 to 35 and verse 37. So right, Acts 7, verses 30 to 35 and verse 37. I'm going to speak, well, let me read all the way to We'll include 36 as well. Hold on. Because the key verses are verse 30, verse 35, verse 37. But write down Acts 7, 30 to 37. So I'm going to read Acts 7, 30 to 37. I'll include 36 as well. Now, guys, follow with me. Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, recounts the Exodus. Look what he says. When 40 years had passed, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in a bush. An angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in a flame of fire in a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. When Moses saw it, he marveled at the sight. And as he drew near to observe, the voice of the Lord came to him saying, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses trembled and dared not look. Then the Lord said to him, hmm, the Lord said to him, but Stephen, you just said it was the angel of the Lord. Take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. I have seen, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard your groaning, and I've come down to deliver them. Now I, and now come I, and now come, I will send you to Egypt. Why didn't this go through? Hmm. Sorry, I put Acts 7, 30. Oh, sorry, that's why. Sorry about that. I didn't see, it didn't come. Okay, now, notice again, 30. The angel Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in a bush. 35. This Moses, whom, I, whom they rejected, 35, Stephen speaking. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge is the one God sent to be a ruler and deliverer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. Notice the angel is distinct from God, and God sent his angel to accompany Moses, the same angel that appeared to him in the bush. Here it goes, Acts 7, 35. Here it is, guys. Read with me, Acts 7.35. Moses is the one God sent to be a ruler and deliverer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. So according to Stephen, according to Stephen, God sent the angel. So the angel is a sting from God. And the angel appeared to Moses in the bush. And the angel accompanied Moses to Pharaoh, to the Israelites in the wilderness. Now watch here, Acts 7.36-37. to 37. Acts 7, 36 to 37. Watch here. He brought them out after he had shown wonders and signs, land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. This is that Moses 
who said to the children of Israel, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear. And 38. Let's include 38. Sorry, I should have said 38. My apologies. Because I'm trying to read. And sorry about that. 38. Watch here. This is he. The key verse is 30, 38. 30, 35, 38. This is that Moses. This is he, 38, who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our fathers, the one who received the living oracles to give to us. Oh, did you catch it? Verse 35, verse 35, 35, verse 30, 35, 38. Lord Jesus, loosen my tongue with the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 30, verse 35, verse 38 says, That angel appeared in the burning bush. That angel accompanied Moses to Pharaoh and the Israelites. That angel then met them at Mount Sinai. It was the angel of Mount Sinai who gave them the commandments. Did that sink in? I'm trying to read and give you the verse. Sorry about that. May the Lord perfect my ability to speak and recall. Did it, did it sink in now before I move on? Okay. So can you connect Exodus 3.14 where God says, I will be what I will be to Jesus? Yes. Because who was speaking to Moses at the bush? The Father, the Holy Spirit, or Jesus the Son? The Son. Because the Son is the angel of the Lord. So who told you you can't connect Exodus 3 with Jesus? Of course you can. Of course you can. You with me there? So we took care of that argument. Is that argument taken care of? Did we get that argument? Because I got to move on to the other points. Hold on. This guy here. This guy's got to go. No, in fact, better. I'm not. I'm gonna move. This guy doesn't stop. He's the one verse Charlie. It's all he wants to talk about is one topic. He's not even paying attention. Okay. So did everyone get that point, or did I confuse you? Did I bore you? Put you to sleep? And like, man, what a waste of time. The burning bush is the sun. The burning bush is the sun. What do I say to that? You're shocked as much as I am? The burning the bush is the sun. Not that the sun, who's the angel, appears as a flame of fire in the bush. So he's not the bush. But he appears as a flame of fire. The bush is the sun. Now, I know God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, can't take on any shape. They can appear as a bush, as a tree, even as a rock, or like the Holy Spirit appears as a dove or tongues of fire. But Exodus 3, 2 says the angel appeared as a flame of fire in the bush that did not consume the bush. Why would you say to me, the bush itself is the sun? Why? Why do you do this to me? I thought you were my friend. Figaro, 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 ha, Figaro. All right. All right. Now, before I move on to the second point. Before I move on to the second point. Did everyone understand the God who appeared in the bush in the shape of fire, flame of fire, took the appearance of flame of fire that did not consume the bush? That God was not the Father. It was Jesus Christ, the angel of the Lord. And I've done multiple sessions on my YouTube channel. And I have articles on my blog and on answeringislam.net 
And I did a series with Al Fadi on Sierra International, as does Anthony Rogers, has articles and series, series proving that Angel of the Lord is Jesus Christ before he became man from the Blessed Virgin. So did we establish that the one who appeared to Moses was the angel of the Lord? Uh, flow life. I'm going to block you after I answer your question. Why would Stephen say the angel of the Lord is Jesus Christ to a group of Jews who are about to kill him and don't believe in Jesus? You're very logical. Jews don't believe in Jesus. They killed him by handing him over to the Romans. And Stephen is now condemning them for what they did. And so you want him to say, hey, yeah, the angel of the Lord? Oh, yeah, that became Jesus. Why? Now, float. Bye-bye. Take care. Make sure you find another channel. Okay? Okay, so for everyone else who's serious and listening, everyone who's seriously listening. Okay. Unbelievable, man. Uh, really, at the state of the church today. God have mercy on us. Lord, give us patience. Okay. Hold on. Say one second. All right. Sorry about that. Yeah, anyway, I was trying to break it. I can't do it anyway. In the flame of fire. Is that the Holy Spirit? In the flame of fire. You guys are shutting me down, man. Honestly. Okay, let's focus now. Who appeared to Moses? Who appeared to Moses and said to Moses, I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. I am Ehye, Asher Ehye, Yahovah. Yeah? Who appeared? The angel of the Lord, right? Okay. So the Father didn't appear, and that wasn't the Holy Spirit. Okay. And according to the New Testament, who is the angel of the Lord? The Father, the Holy Spirit, or Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ. So can you guys focus that you just established that that has a connection with Jesus Christ? That has a connection with Jesus Christ. Because if the angel appeared and spoke to Moses and identified him as God, himself as God, as the Ehye, as Yahweh, then that was Jesus Christ. And by the way, this is an ancient tradition of the church. For those of you who are Catholic, Orthodox, Assyrian Church of the East, and Coptic, this was argued not by me, but by the church fathers, apologists like Justin Martyr. Did you know that? Justin Martyr, in his dialogue with Trifo the Jew, which you can read online for free at newadvent.org. He says to Trifle, that angel of the Lord was none other than Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who was sent by God to the patriarchs and the prophets to Moses because he's God's messenger sent to them with the, with the Father's message. You get it now? You get it now? Did we get that point so I can move on to the second point? Because I got to move on to the second point. Everyone got it? Even Sonia, my precious sister, is staying up for this? Poor sister. And if you want my article on Justin Martyr, let me know. I'll get you. I'll give you my articles. Okay. If you want my article on Justin Martyr, before I end the session, I'll give it to you. Just say, Sam. Don't wait when I say, okay, guys, I'm gone. Say, Sam, Sam. Articles on Justin Martyr, I'll get it to you. But before I get that to you, can we move on to the next point? Are people still confused? Anyone confused? Well, we just established. Anyone confused? I got to make sure. Okay, so everyone is on page. You now saw it's not God the Father. That was Jesus Christ, the angel of the Lord, okay? If you just got here, don't chime in. Just listen. I'm talking about people who are listening. So 
Before this session, how many of you still mistakenly thought, though you have been following me and let's say Anthony Rogers, and we've talked about the angel Lord for years now, and you shouldn't have been confused. You should have known the answer. But how many of you before this session thought it was God the Father speaking to Moses? How many of you thought it was God the Father speaking to Moses? Even though there are many of you who've been following my YouTube channel, following my apologetics ministry, reading my articles, watching the sessions, following Anthony Rogers for years, and we've already showed who it was, and you still didn't get it. You know why you didn't get it? Because you're not paying careful attention. You're not studying the material over and over again until it becomes second nature by the grace of God. It becomes part of your DNA, your spiritual fabric. So now you can teach others like it's part of my DNA, part of Anthony Rogers' DNA. It was part of Justin Martyr's DNA, Tertullian's DNA. It was second nature to them. Thank you, Revelation 3.20. See, you knew because you're paying attention. God bless you. That's okay. I'm talking about the people who've been here for a while. I'm not talking about you newbies. So when someone tells you, God the Father spoke to Moses in the bush, correct them, say, no, it was the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord appeared to Moses as God, said he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, said he's the Ahyeh and Yahovah. And that angel is sent by the Father. And yes, the angel works in unit Holy Spirit, but it's the angel that appeared. And the angel said, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the Ahyeh. He is the yod heh vav -Hey. And when you follow the trail, that angel then becomes the man Christ Jesus. And we got sessions on my YouTube channel, articles on my blog, website, and Anthony Rogers on his channel covering this. Okay. Okay, so with that said, I want to move on to a second point. Here's the second point. Are we ready for the second point now? With that said, remember I took so much time at the beginning talking about the Greek versions of the Hebrew Bible, particularly the Greek versions that the Orthodox churches and the Greek-speaking churches used. Today you have the Orthodox Church and its manifold, you know, it's in its the variety of the Orthodox Church, whether Russian Orthodox, Serbian, Greek, the Orthodox Church, and you have Orthodox Christians here from the Orthodox Church. They do not go by the Hebrew version of the Old Testament. They go by the Greek versions, typically referred to as the Septuagint. The Septuagint. Do you know why I spent time unpacking what the Septuagint is? Because this particular Greek version, right? This particular Greek version shows you how the Jews understood the Hebrew. Are you ready? Shows you how the Jews understood the Hebrew because Exodus 3.14 was written in Hebrew. What was the Hebrew phrase? Okay, follow with me. Ehyeh, Ashir, Ehyeh. Ehyeh, Ashir, Ehyeh. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how the Greek translation of Exodus 3.14, done by a particular group of Jews, right, which the Greek-speaking churches inherited and copied and recopied, which is the Old Testament version used by the Orthodox Church, how that Greek version translates Exodus 3.14. And you have Orthodox Christians here. Can you Orthodox Christian Christians confirm the Orthodox Church, the official Old Testament, is the Greek versions called the Septuagint? Duncan, we understand. Please don't chime in and comment. We, we know, brother. Stop, Duncan. I know you think you're doing us a favor, but you're not. Right? Okay. Why is that important? Let me show you something. Okay, guys, I hope I'm not boring you guys and torturing you guys. I hope I'm not because I'm getting tortured when people ask me questions that are irrelevant, not directed at a topic, and not focusing. Please focus. Okay, 
Here is the English translation of the Greek version. Here's the English translation of the Greek version. Here's the link. Here is the link. Please click on that link. Please click on that link. I may have to do a part two here. Okay. Exodus 3.14. Here's how the Greek renders the Hebrew phrase, Ehye, Asher, Ehye. And God said to Moses, saying, I am the being. I am the being. So what is your name, God? I am the being. Oh, wow. Thus shall ye say to the children of Israel, the being has sent me to you. <whistles> what do you make? Oh, you're here. Okay, first last is here, guys. Praise the Lord. He's here. He's here. Did you see how the Greek renders the Hebrew? The Greek renders the Hebrew ehye as haon. The Greek is ego emi haon. Ego emi haon. Ego emi haon. Here it goes. Let me repeat it again. Ego emi. I am haon. Haon, right, can mean the one, the being. The existing one. And then he says, tell them, Ha'on has sent me to you. Ha'on has sent me to you. So the Greek renders, Ehye. Guys, I need you to get this. You're getting meat here. I'm not lying to you. There are many people who go to seminary who don't get this. The Greek rendered, Ehye as Ha'on. Ehye as Ha'on. Are you getting it? Ha'on. And what does Ha'on mean? Ha'on means the being, the existing one, or the one. Yep, this is Greek. Get the link again. Here's the link so you can read the Greek. If you can read the Greek, it's right there. English translation of the Greek, verse 14. Ke aipin o theos pros musain legon. Ego, aimi, haon. I just read the Greek for you. It's right here. Here it goes. Ego, ego, aimi, haon. Here's the Greek. This is the Greek. That's the Greek. If you can read it, ego, aimi, haon. Okay. And then later on he says, Tell them Haon has sent me to you. Here it is. Here it is, the Greek, if you can read it. There it goes right there. And here's the phrase. It's okay then. Don't worry about it. Why are you crying then? Can't even read English. Don't worry about it. Haon. Haon would be transliterated as Haon. Ego, Amy, Haon. Ego, Amy, I am. Ha'on, the being, the existing one, the one who exists, right? The one. You know why that's important? You know why that's important? Are you guys really settled and listening attentively? You want meat? You want five-course meal? You want steak, potatoes of the word, right? Okay. That means you're going to be listening attentively. You're going to be listening attentively. And I hope Sonia is getting this. I hope I'm not confusing her. Okay. You know why this is important? The tradition says Jews, not Christian Jews, not Trinitarian Jews, Jews before the time of Christ translated Exodus 3 into Greek. That means Jews understood this verb, not as future tense. They didn't see it as future tense, I will be. They actually saw it as present tense. I am the being, the one who currently exists. You get it? 
You got it? Do you understand? This means the Jews looked at the verb not as I will be, but as I am that one, the being, the existing one, who's not bound to time, who transcends time, who created time, is in control of time. I am, and you cannot bind me to time. And because I am, I was there from the beginning, I am with you now, and will be with you in the future. Catholic Crusader, you're getting it now? Now, is it legitimate to translate a future tense verb? Eh, yeah, I will be as present tense. Here's something I want you to remember now. I'm going to teach you a little bit about the Hebrew language. Are, are you ready? Because if you don't get any of these points, you won't understand. Okay. Yes, it is. Do you know why? Any scholar of the Hebrew will tell you the Hebrew language is what they call an aspectual language. The tenses of the verb do not determine whether the verb is future, but the context will. Because the Hebrew language is such that you'll have sentences that will use a past tense verb for a future event or a past tense verb for a present reality or a future tense verb for a present reality. So the Hebrew language, you do not determine the tense of the verb by the verb itself, but by the way the verb is used. So just because it's future tense doesn't mean in context it should be future because the Bible will often use future tense verbs to refer to a present reality. That's how complicated the language is. Why do you think there's a debate? Why do you think the Jews that translated Ehye into Greek understood it as present tense, not future? You get it now? Didn't they know Hebrew? Yeah. Didn't they know it's future? Yeah. But they determined from the context it's not really future as it is an emphasis on God's present timeless existence. So we should emphasize that the future verb is referring to God transcending time because he is. Yeah, it's a timeless present, meaning he is. So because he is, he was there from the beginning, is here now, and will be there in the future. Do you want to see the New Testament equivalent of the phrase? Do you want to see the New Testament equivalent of this phrase? Guys, you think I'm exaggerating when I'm telling you what you're getting here by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit get bestowed on me and you. We're getting meat now. The stuff that we're learning is the Holy Spirit and His love pouring wisdom and spoiling us. I'm not exaggerating, man. Serious. You got to be thankful and praise the Lord. And I thank the Lord. God, you're amazing to be giving us this wisdom. We don't deserve it. That's why it's grace. Because God wants us to know him. You know where you're going to find the interpretation of this passage? Revelation 1.4. Revelation 1.8. Revelation 4.8. But let's go to Revelation 1.4. Here you go. Here is the inspired interpretation of Exodus 3.14. Here's what it mean, means. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is. Guess what it is in Greek? Own. Who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits, spirits who are before his throne. There it is. He is, he was, and he's coming. Bam. There you go, folks. And then Revelation 1.8. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Bam, there you go. That's what Exodus 3.14 means. The timeless one, the ever-living one, who creates time, controls time, is not bound by time, and therefore, because he's timeless, he was there at the start. He's with you now and will be there in the future, and he's coming. Did it sink in?
That's right. Al awwal wal akhir. Bam, Mikhail, you got it. Did it sink in now? And I'm going to sum up how you use Exodus 3.14 to prove that Jesus is God. That was the second point. Now, Catholic Crusader, is it now making sense or are you still confused? Not that he never I was. Because I, he is, he was there from the start, he's there now, and will be there in the future. So there's a sense in which you have to say, Dwight, he was there. He was there. Because he can't help but have been there when it started and be there now and be there in the future. Ned, I got dozens of articles on the I am and responses to anti-Trinitarians and sessions. It's all on my blog and answeringislam.net, which we put in the description box when the sessions are over. So everyone got it? Oh, my neck, that felt good. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure you're getting it. It's very complex. So let me repeat. In Hebrew, the verbs do not determine. The context determines how the verb should be understood. So you may have a past tense verb that's speaking of the future. You may have a present tense verb that's speaking of the future or even referring to the past, and a, and a future tense verb that's referring to the present. You got to see how the verbs are used in context. Because I'm not a scholar of Hebrew or Greek. I'm a student, Jeffrey. And I'm going to share a testimony of the goodness and the power of our Jesus Christ, how he flooded me in his love and mercy. You know, oh, I'll get back to it later. No, I'm not, Chief Hugo, I'm not. I'll get back to that later. Okay, so if everyone got it, you got the second point. Do you know what own? Remember it says ha own. Ha own, okay? A being. Existing one, right? The one existing, okay? Okay, you know what this... Participle own, own, which is existing one, one existing being, own or on. Okay, let me break it down for you guys. Yep, ego, me, ha own. Yep, now, you know, okay, I'm giving you the Greek in transliteration. Okay, as you're reading that, as you're reading that, the word ha is the definite article in Hebrew, it's the. Ha is the in Hebrew. I want you to focus on this word, which is spelled as on. On, right? On. This word means being, existing one, right? One who is existing, okay? On, okay? You see that, right? That word on is the participle or participial form of a me. Let me show you what I mean. Let me show you what I mean. So I don't confuse you guys, dude. Don't worry about it. You'll get the Greek. Just keep studying because remember, I'm not a Greek scholar either, dude. I learned it by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can take foolish people like me and make us wise. Okay, now let me show you what I mean by own. Let me go there. I'm looking for ha own. Sorry, guys. Let me just find it for you. Not the definite article. Ha own. Ha own. Sorry about that. Ha own. Sorry. About that. Let me get it for you. Hold on. It's gonna be. Sorry, guys. It's what happens when you laugh. You laugh, fucker. Fucking MC call me thigh. Are the king of rap? They ain't none high. All right. Fucking MC call me thigh. <laughs> king of rock ain't none high. Fucking MC. Okay. okay. Disciples. All right, let me find it for you, so because I want you to see it. Erchomai, found one. Are you the one? What is going on here, bro? Hold on, man. I can't find it now. What it is? What it be like? Sorry, guys. I'm trying to find it. For some reason, I can't find it. Oh, Moluchmane. 
Oh, the bracha. I'll do some string. Wa bartender. Wa maluch minne. Uh, oh, yeah, here it was. Yeah, for one more. Oh, the Praha. Here it is. I found it. Sorry. Here it is, buddy. Okay. The word own. Here you go. Okay, guys, click on that link. Can you click on that link? You'll see the word own. And then you're going to see it says present participle of I me. Root word present participle of I me. I me and Lil Khalil Abu Khalil. I need your help too. I need to kiss your head. La go live stream. Khalil Abu, call me when I'm done. Khalil Ori Shukhan Lil. All right. Do you see it here? The word own is the present participle of I me. I me. Okay. You guys see that? You guys catching it? Present participle of I me. Own. Is the present participle? It's the verbal ad adjectival form of I me. I me is the verb. I me, right? That means am. And own is the participial participial form, meaning it's the verbal adjectival form, the one existing. In other words, own basically has the same meaning as I me. Own basically has the same meaning as I me, right? You get what I'm saying? You understand, right? Own is the present, present, participle, verbal, adjectival form of I, me, the verb. Own and I, me basically are synonyms. They basically mean the same thing. You with me there? They basically have the same meaning, right? Both mean existing. I am. I'm existing now, right? Okay. Why? Because you can use two words synonymously. What do I mean by that? You don't have to use the same word to say the same thing. You can say the same thing by using different words, right? Why is that important? Because Jesus says, before Abraham was born, ego, I, me. I, I, me. Even though Jesus didn't use the word own, he was basically saying the same thing, meaning... To say that you are Ha'on, the existing one, and to say that you are, you are, I am, is basically saying the same thing. It's two different ways of saying the same thing, making the same point. So what's the point? Jesus is saying, I am, meaning I am existence. I've always existed. I'll always exist. So that's simply another way of saying Ha'on. So he didn't use the same words per se, or I should say John didn't use the same Greek words, but he used words that are synonymous in meaning. That's what I'm trying to get at. So understand and don't fall for the trap when they say, well, here in the Greek it says, ha o, but Jesus said, ego I mean. He didn't say the same thing. No, there are two different ways of saying the same thing. And that's where they try to deceive you. You get my point? Jesus didn't have to say, before Abraham was born, ego, I me, ha on. By saying ego, I me, in the context which he said it, he was saying the same thing as ha on. Because why? The word on is the present participle of I me. So I me and on are virtually synonymous. They basically say the same thing. You get it? Everyone got that? Because I'm going to go now to my third point. My third point, and then we're going to wrap it up. I'll sum up the arguments. Go back and make sure you re-listen re to this. Listen to this several times until it becomes second nature by the grace of God. Because once you learn this argument... You're going to decimate, shred, and destroy this anti-Trinitarian objection. Hold on, hold on, Christ witness. He said, what word did he say in Hebrew? Hold on, hold on. Christ witness wants to know. John wrote Jesus' words in Greek by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but he wants me to tell him what he said in Hebrew. Hold on, hold on. One second, uh, Christ witness.
Hey, Michael, what's up? How's it, how's it hanging in heaven, bro? Man, I miss you. How's Gabriel doing? Is, is he still visiting people? Or is he taking a break? Hey, Michael, can you do me a favor, man? Yeah. I know John is there. Which John? Come on, Michael. Oh, you mean there are many Johns? Not John the Baptist. John the Apostle. Yeah, John the Apostle. Oh, he's too busy? All right, can you do me a favor? Can you locate him somewhere in heaven? Maybe he's fishing with Paul there. Can you ask him to call me back and tell me, what did Jesus say in Hebrew, even though Jesus may have not been speaking Hebrew, may have been Aramaic? When he says, before Abraham was born, I am. Because John wrote it in Greek, ego me. Why does that matter? Come on, Gabriel. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant Michael. I, don't get angry at me. Come on, Michael. We got a Christian man here, Christ's witness, and it matters to him. Come on, Michael. What's wrong with you? Oh, don't get online. I'm sorry. All right. Okay, and then blame him. His name is Christ's witness. Even though he's not using a pseudonym, you know who he is. Visit him tonight. Teach him a lesson because I'm just a messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. But I still love you. You know that. You bad, homie. All right, man. Peace. Sorry, Christ witness. I couldn't get you the answer. Apologize for that. Apologize, friend. Can you forgive me? No hard feeling, right? Okay. Now, coming back to what John wrote by inspiration of the Holy Spirit in Greek. The Greek is ego I me. I me and own basically are synonymous. They mean the same thing. Own is the present participle of I me. They basically mean the same thing. Am. You are. You're existing. Okay. So Jesus didn't have to say ego I me ha own to say the same thing that the Greek translation of Exodus 3.14 has God saying. Ego me ha own and ego me can mean the same thing depending on the context. You want me there? Exactly, Arthur Lewis. I want to kiss your head. I want to kiss your head. Yep. The Hebrew would have been anihu, Arthur Lewis, or anohi, anohi hu. Anihu or anohi hu. I want to kiss your head. You got it, brother. God bless you for the wisdom he's given you by the Holy Spirit. May give us all the Holy Spirit. To love Jesus, to know Jesus, know his word, live it out in the strength of the Holy Spirit. You got it. He got it. Okay. Okay. Now, can I go to the third and final point? See here, you're going to get comedy. You're going to get yelled at, chewed at. You're going to feel like you're worthless. Then you're going to feel worthy or good. You know, you're going to get all of that here, man. It's all free, dude. Right? What psychologist? Come to me. Come to daddy. Come to Baba. Mini a booch. All right. Anyway, who's your daddy? Papi, who's your papi? All right, anyway. The third and final point. Are we ready for the third and final point? John 8, 58. Now I'm going to prove to you, I'm going to prove to you in John 8, 58, when Jesus said, I am, which John wrote in Greek by instruction of the Holy Spirit, Prin Abraham Genestai, right? Prin Abraham Genestai, ego I me, that Jesus in context was saying the same thing that the Greek version of Exodus 3.14 has God saying. He was saying, I am the existing one. I'm going to prove that to you. Are you ready? And both Exodus 3 and John 8 is Jesus. Because it's Jesus as the angel Lord who's speaking in Exodus 3. And it's Jesus now in the flesh as a Jewish man, a physical body and human nature that he received from his blessed virgin mother by the power of the Spirit saying it. So Jesus was speaking in John 8 and he was speaking in Exodus 3. Jesus was speaking to Moses before he became flesh, and now is speaking to the Jews after he became flesh. It's the same eternal divine person speaking in both chapters. So are you ready to go out with a bang? You guys ready? Because John 8, 58, get ready to be blown away. Okay? Now, if you do, but remember, because it's a live stream, but you got to do something real quick. And I'll sing to you. I'll be singing as I go, because, by the way, our sister, Sonia, mm -hmm. loves Jesus. Pray for her, her husband and son, and God bless them. Make them on fire for the Lord. She sings 
She's got a blessed voice to sing. Maybe she can get, send you the links to her singing. She sings like opera, right, for Jesus. So I'm going to try to sing a song to meet her approval because she she grades me if I pass the test or not. So I'm going to sing. Margarita, I will search until I find you. And the roses shall remind you. Ya muchachita, Margarita. Do, 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 do. Ya muchachita, Margarita. I will search until I find you. And the roses will remind you. Ya muchachita, Margarita. Do, 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 do. Any time for me to sing Salinas. Are you guys ready for some Salinas? Who's ready for Salinas? Uh huh. Yes, yes. Salinas. I want to sing some. Yeah. Let me sing some Salina. Come on the floor. Piri piri pa pa. Hi. Piri 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 papa, go on the floor. Piri piri piri, the piri piri piri, oh piri piri piri, piri piri the papa, piri 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 papa. All right, Margarita. All right, we're ready. The final third point. Okay, first last. We ready? We is ready, homie. She go primo, hopefully. What's up, Carnal? All right, are we ready now? Okay. Let's go to John 8, 58 again. Here's where people ignore context. Mahdi, ask me 10 more times about Shia, and I'll send you to Iran. Okay? John 8, 58. Okay, one more time. Post it so we can finish it. Jesus said to them, most assuredly, <laughs> I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. She thought you're watching a movie, Sal Racinos? So she thought it was like an opera singer or something? Man, I'm such a good deceiver. I'd make a good Shia Muslim. All right, guys. People will quote John 8, 58, but will never, never remind you of the context. They just go to John 8, 58. Before Abraham was born, I am. No, no, no. And by the way, I'm exaggerating. Hyperbole there. Okay, now watch here. Let me now show you the context. Now, when I show you the context, you'll be blown away. Why did our Lord say, before Abraham was born, I am? Let me show you the context. Okay? Are you ready for the context? Okay. John 8, 56. Let's take it verse by verse. John 8, 56. Let's read it. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Number one, Jesus tells the Jews, your father Abraham, whom you swear by, wanted to see my day. He saw it, rejoiced, was elated, was excited, was glad. Now the Jews are looking at a Jewish man because they're seeing Jesus in a physical body, a fellow Jew, flesh and blood Jew. He doesn't even look 50 years old, and they're astounded. You know Abraham's reaction? You know and are aware of Abraham's reaction? You're saying Abraham wanted to see your day and saw it and was excited? Now let's read their reaction in verse 57. John 8, 57. Then the Jews said to him, You're not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Abraham's been dead for 2,000 years. Your statement makes no sense because your statement implies Abraham saw you, you saw him, you saw him, and he saw you. You saw each other face to face, and you saw his reaction when he saw you. How? You're not 50 years old. Then verse 58 comes in. Now the context, John 8, 58. Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. You know what the answer is? Don't let my physical appearance mislead you. I'm much older than 50. Let me tell you how old I am. Even before your father came into being, 
I already was. I was there before he came into being. I was there when he came to being. I was there after he died, and I remain to be to the present and forever. I am. Unlike him who was created, I've always been, will always be. That's the context. Not LMAO, dude. Not LMAO. It's LMBO. Don't use A, dude. Now, when you read it in context, then you get the meat. Why did Jesus say, before Abraham was born, I am? To show them, I saw your father. Your father was happy to see me. But you're not even 50. On the contrary, physically... As a man with a human nature, yes, I'm not yet 50. But I'm more than a man. And unlike your father Abraham who came into being, I've always been. I was there before he came into being. I was there when he came into being and met him face to face. And I remain even long after he's dead because I am. And that's basically what Exodus 3.14 is saying. Moses, I will be with you. Do you know why? I am. I've been there from the start. I was there with your fathers. I'm now with you and will be with you and remain with you to the end of the age. Matthew 28, verse 20. Here's what Jesus said. Matthew 28, verse 20. What does Jesus say? Teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Here's the God of Moses, Jesus Christ, who was there with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom Abraham saw, who was there with Moses in the bush, who was there with the apostles, who is now with us and will remain with us and with every generation till the end of the age when he returns physically from heaven. I am who I am, and I will be all that I promise to be in my love for you. That's the answer. So is Jesus the I am of Exodus 3.14? Yes. Is he the God of Moses who appeared to him in the bush? Yes. Is he the God that was there who appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Yes. Is he the God that then became flesh and walked this earth? Among his disciples, yes. And is, 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 is he the God who's still with us? Yes. And will he be with us tomorrow and the next day and the next to the end of the age? Yes. Because he's always been, he currently is, and always will be the I am. That's who Jesus is. So let me wrap it up and give you the articles on Justin Martyr. Let me wrap it up and give you the articles on Justin Martyr. Is Jesus... The I am of Exodus 3.14, yes. Was he the God who appeared in a flame of fire in the bush, did not consume the bush, to Moses? Yes. And <clears throat> did Jesus claim to be, in John 8.58, the eternal one, the one who has always been, who unlike Abraham that was created, he's always been, he didn't come into being, and always will be, which is why... He was there before Abraham, was there to see Abraham, and remains to be even long after Abraham's gone, long after you and I will be gone, until the end of the age when he comes down from heaven in his physical glorified body. Yeah. So you don't need to, let me now wrap it up and give you a point to consider. Don't waste your time connecting John 8, 58 with Exodus 3, 14. You don't need to do that anymore. What you do is... Just show from John 8, 58, Jesus is claiming to be eternal. You don't need to go to Exodus 3, 14 to show that in John 8, 58, Jesus is claiming to be the God of Abraham and Moses, who was always there even before they came into being. Just from John 8, don't take 8, 58 and run to Exodus 3, 14. Just stay in John 8 and read 56 to 59. You with me there? And then go to Exodus 3 to show... That the God who told Moses, Ehyeh, Ashir, Ehyeh. The God who told Moses, I am Yod-Heh, Vav-Heh, 
is the angel of the Lord. Exodus 3, 2. It was the angel who said, I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. I am Eheh, Ashir Eheh. I am yod Hey vav Hey. It was the angel that the Father sent. And that angel then became Jesus Christ in the flesh. So you see now, don't waste time connecting John 8, 58, Exodus 3, 14, and getting into debates. Prove your case just from John 8, 56 to 59, and then go to Exodus 3 and tell them, hey, who's speaking here? They'll tell you, the Father. No, Exodus 3, T, 3 2, the angel of Jehovah. And now let me prove to you that angel's not a creature. He's a messenger sent by God. He's uncreated by nature because he is God, claims to be God, does things only God can do, and people worship him as God. And let me show you that angel becoming Jesus Christ. That's it. It's over. It's done. Done. And let me show you Jesus himself saying, not only was he there before Abraham came into being, he was there with the Father, alongside the Father, before the world was created. John 17, verse 5 and 24. John 17, verse 5 and 24. I'm going to leave the articles and we're done. Hope you're blessed with this session. You got a lot of meat today. John 17, verse 5 and 24. Read with me. Read. And now, Father, glorify me together with yourself. Glorify me with yourself in your presence with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I was there alongside of you, Father, next to you, Father, before the world was created in the same glory. And now I'm returning to you to bask in that same glory that you and I enjoyed with each other before the world was. And now notice John 17, 24. Father, I desire that though they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. Let that sink in. Jesus just confirmed two facts, two truths. I was there side by side with the Father. I was there side by side with the Father before the world was created. That means before Adam and Eve, before animals, before the dry ground, before the sky, before the sun and moon and stars, before Abraham, I was there with the Father side by side, basking in the same divine glory because the Father has been loving me, loving me, in love with me, loving on me before the world was created. So I was there as the object of, the, of his love. He was in love with me before the world was created. And I was there alongside of him in the same glory. That's what Jesus just said. But you want to be humble? You want to see how much Jesus loves you? Do you want me to show you how much the Godhead is in love with you and me? How much the Father, Son, and Spirit are in love with us? That they're not a selfish God, but a God of infinite love who wants to flood us in their infinite love? You want me there? You want me to show you? Okay. John 17, 23. John 17, 23. Pay attention now. Guys, now, no comments. Read, because I want you to get into a moment of worship and just fall in love with Jesus and just be in awe of him. Notice what he said. I and them, Father, he's praying to the Father. I am in all the believers, my apostles and those who believe through their message. I am in all of them. And you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know, watch this, that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Oh, wow. Jesus says, because of me being in you, in fellowship with you and communion with you, my father loves and adores you just as much as he loves me. And I want the world to know that. My father, Abba, my Abba, loves all the believers who are in union with me just as much as he loves me. But then secondly, John 17, 24. Secondly, 
John 17, 24. Watch this because you didn't pay attention closely. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. You know what he just said? Father, wherever I am, may they dwell with me. May my spiritual body be with me where I am. And Jesus gets what he prays for. You know what that means, Sonia and everyone else? If you're in Christ, your destiny in mind is to dwell side by side next to Jesus wherever he is. Wherever he is, we are there next to him, right alongside of him, basking in his beauty and his love. Because he says, I want them next to me, with me. But now let me show you where Jesus is. John 1.18. John 1, 18. And we're going to end it. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. Guys, let that move you to tears. Jesus lives in the bosom of the father, in the father's heart. And he just said, Father, I want them to be where I am. So you're going to be with Jesus in the father's heart. In the bosom of the Father, all of us was Jesus in the very bosom and the heart of Abba. And that's what Jesus has promised for you. Catch it? Jesus said, it's moving me. Jesus said, my beloved, speaking to all of us, through his word. It's what he says to all of us. Jesus said, my beloved. I am in love with you. The Holy Spirit is in love with you. And my Father is in love with you. And because you love me and you are connected to me and you're my spiritual body, the church, my Father loves and adores you just as much as he loves and adores me. And I guarantee you, you will be with me exactly where I am. And guess where I am? I'm in the very heart in the bosom of the Father, and you will be in his heart, in his bosom, forever with me, and nothing will separate you. That's my promise for you who love me and cling to me. See? See how amazing he is? You can never love him enough. You can never thank him enough. You can never praise him enough. You can never do enough for him. So let's do more and more and more and more to show him how thankful we are, right? Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Son of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give us the power to be in love with you and to obey you and to delight your heart and not break your heart and not to shame you. And Abba, Babi alahi ukhayi, Babit marani shumshika. Hear the cries of my daughters, Sarai and Zipporah. And see the anguish of my heart, Abba. I ache for these girls because they are your angels, Father, that you gave me to show me you love me. Ya Babi, my Father. You are the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of Jesus, we can call you Abba, Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit. My Father, our Father. Ya Babi, bring them into my arms so I can raise them, love them, pray with them, teach them, and awaken with them. Convict their mother to just come back to you in, in love with you so that they can be next to me. And please, Bobby, make it sooner than later. But your will be done. Your will be done, Father. Lord Jesus, your will be done. Holy Spirit, your will be done. And give us the grace to live for Jesus and die for Jesus. Maran Athe, Lord Jesus, come sooner than later and keep us in love with you. In Jesus' name, let me give you the link to Justin Martyr. One second, we'll end it. Justin Martyr will end it. Hold on. You go here, I just put in <clears throat> the search engine Justin Martyr. You're going to see several articles on Justin Martyr. So you go to answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. I just put in the search engine. I have one article just on Justin Martyr quoting him what he says about Jesus. But then I have responses to demons like Shabrali who misquote Justin Martyr. So read it all right there. Save it. 
Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Jesus is Yehovah in the flesh, the glory of the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Pray for me to get healthier, that the Lord will save us from COVID because I'm revisiting people's homes. Not to be afraid, to trust the Lord will keep us healthy. My daughter's healthy and bring them sooner than later and give them salvation and provide for us and the holiness we need to delight our heart. Pray for the support to continue to come in. Re-listen to this session until it becomes second nature. And upload it to your YouTube channels and share it with others. And by the way, <clears throat> yesterday an exciting film came out on the event called Fatima. Even if you're not Catholic, you can get it on YouTube video or Amazon Prime or even Apple TV. Go and watch tonight the film Fatima. It's based on a true event. Even if you're not Catholic, watch it. God willing, I'll be watching it tonight, if the Lord is pleased. I love you guys for the sake of Jesus. So take care.